Hello, Facebook friends. Happy Saturday, April, April 25th. Hope you're all doing great. I know this is my second video today. It's crazy, but the first was kind of uh, impromptu. I actually planned to do this video, although I didn't tell anybody. So maybe nobody's gonna be on, but maybe somebody is gonna be on. Either way, it will be on my Facebook and I will put it on my YouTube. I had a couple more requests for making fish more often. And so I'm gonna do another cod dish tonight. I've done two different cod dishes, both of which were incredible. One was using frozen cod from Trader Joe's and the other one was using fresh cod from Costco. This dinner is going to be the fresh cod from Costco because you know you get that giant pack and it's the second half of that that I froze in the meantime. So that is what is on the menu for tonight. Uh, we're trying to eat more and more vegetarian meals and more and more seafood meals instead of meat. And, and as you may know, a lot of the um, coronavirus cases have really affected the meat plants in the Midwest, especially in, in um, Nebraska and in North Dakota, I think, and in Iowa, where I'm from. So um, obviously, you know, these people are working in close quarters. So I'm expecting that meat prices are gonna go up significantly. So it's another good reason to switch over to vegetarian and or seafood dishes. So we're gonna get started here. This is a, um, a recipe I used to make every, every so often, maybe once or twice a year. And I wanted to find another good recipe that I knew and I trusted, even though those other two were amazing and they were brand new recipes I'd never done before. But this one is from Bon Appetit. February, actually September, September 1990, 1998. So this is an old recipe, as you can see my, my stains on here and whatnot. But yeah, this is my, uh, my interesting filing system for recipes. But it's sea bass, I'm not using sea bass. Um, you can do it with sea bass, Pacific or, uh, or Chilean. But I'm using cod, which will work very well. It would work with um, any kind of white fish. It would work with halibut really well. It would work with um, uh, mahi mahi, but I, I think it's really good with sea bass and cod are kind of very similar in their texture. So I'm gonna give it a shot and I'm gonna serve it with, so first of all, it's kind of like a marinade glaze that you make. Then you bake the fish in the oven and while you're doing that, you make this ginger butter sauce that's incredible. It's still good without the ginger butter sauce, but I highly, 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 highly recommend it because it's incredible, especially if you watch, if you like ginger, and I had ginger in my turmeric cod recipe as well. And Mikey, I know you really like that. So if you don't see this, I'm gonna tag you on it so you can watch it later. Um, and I'm gonna serve it with uh, ancient grains and a salad. So super simple Saturday night, Saturday night. All right, so here we go. Get my hair out of the way. So yes, I'm always like hair up, no makeup, sunglasses on because I'm outside all the time. In fact, I was just driving around outside. So that's why the shades. Somebody asked about my shades. Like, no, I don't wear them in the house. Or I could sing that song. I wear my sunglasses at night so I can, so I can. Visions in my eyes. Okay, Corey Hart, 80s throwback. Sorry about that. You know, sometimes I get a little crazy. I had a little axe go today. Okay, so you may wonder what this is. I think you can see that. It's honey. Honey, this glaze calls, calls for honey. And my honey was all um, hard and crystallized. So I've had to do this before, but instead of throwing it away, I just put it in some hot water and it gets all soft and uncrystallized. So that is why this is here. So I can remove that now because I'm gonna use this little pan to make the glaze. So the glaze is kind of a teriyaki-ish, sort, of, sort of an Asian flavor. It calls for rice vinegar, which I do not have. I thought I had it. I have red wine vinegar and I have regular white vinegar and I have apple cider vinegar. So I'm gonna sub apple cider vinegar. It's a stronger flavored vinegar, um, but whatever. It's, a, it's an acid and you need an acid in this. So I'll just put a little less in than typically. So the first step in this is to make the glaze. Um, Preheat the oven to 350 actually is the first step. Combine vinegar, soy sauce, and honey in a small saucepan. And that is a half a cup of rice vinegar. I'm gonna put a little less in a quarter cup of soy and a quarter cup of honey. So I'm gonna grab my soy and we'll get going on this. There's my soy. Okay, so I always use low sodium soy sauce and sometimes I use coconut aminos, which are um, very similar, but they're not soy based. So people that have gluten issues, because a lot of soy sauce has traces of gluten in it, 
do coconut aminos instead, and those are very good, and they basically taste like soy sauce. So a half a cup of the rice vinegar. This is a um, organic apple cider, unfiltered, so there's like sediment in here, but really good stuff. So I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna do the full half a cup. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a quarter cup of that because I wanna taste it first to see the strength. Um, the honey, I'm just gonna pour this in there because it's kind of runny now that I melted it all up. So that's supposed to be a quarter cup. I'll just put a little less in, maybe. Yes, one of my many hacks in the kitchen. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of hacks on the golf course too. Trick shots, things like that. Useful, comes in useful. And soy, I think that is a quarter cup as well. I'll measure that one. Um, kind of like salt, you wanna be careful with soy. You don't want too much soy. In this case, you could correct it fairly easily by just putting in more honey, which would be very easy to do. And these three things, you can correct them however you want. Okay, in a small saucepan and high heat. So we're gonna start this going, but don't do it on too high of heat. And in the meantime, it asks for cornstarch and water because this, is, this needs to be thickened up. So I have this gigantic thing of cornstarch. I, um, I ordered from Ralph's the other day, Instacart, so I, I didn't have time to go or I didn't wanna go. And my, uh, my burner's off, so I gotta move it. And so I, I did the online thing and they weren't letting you um, do the free pickup because they were full or something. I don't know, I had to wait like a week to do that. So I did the delivery because I had a delivery spot available on whatever day that was, Friday. Or maybe it's Thursday. So the Instacart thing, and it was really great to use. It's a $9.95 fee and you give a, a tip, but it was really slick. So you order everything and the shopper gets it. And if she's out of something, she texts you and is subbing things. And if you don't want her to sub, you can say no thanks. And anyway, it was really great. I, I might just have to use that on a regular basis now. I mean, the pickup would be great. You'd save yourself 10 bucks. Um, you probably still want to tip a little bit, but it was, it was awesome. They were out of quite a few things like flour, but luckily my friend Denise, who I'm gonna talk about a little later, had some flour. So she brought me flour today and a bunch of other yummy things. And I was able to make my sourdough because I'm out of bread and I usually make a loaf a week. Okay, I'm gonna taste this. Make sure it's not too vinegary. Mm -mm, it's actually very good. I'm gonna put a little more honey in it because I think that apple cider vinegar is just a stronger stronger vinegar than the rice. It's gonna be a slightly different flavor. And who knows, I never measured the honey anyway, so who knows how much I really put in. Okay. All right, so long story short, that's why I have a giant thing of cornstarch because they were out of the Clabber Girl, which is what I usually order. And she subbed this Kroger cornstarch. It's the, uh, it's a gigantic Acme size cornstarch. So it's really just a thickener, so who cares? Uh, one tablespoon cold water and two and a half teaspoons. Uh, two and a quarter teaspoons. I mean, who gets that precise? Two and a quarter teaspoons of cornstarch? Whatever. One, two, that's probably two and a quarter right there. It's not like it's gonna kill you if you have more or less. It's cornstarch for God's sakes. Okay, and a little bit of water. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna measure that either. You know, sometimes people just get too caught up in being precise about these things. It just doesn't matter. The whole point of this is just to provide a little thickener. Now again, I'm not a professional chef, so some of you professional chefs might disagree with me. Hey, Lori. Okay, where do you get the cod? So there are two places I get cod. Trader Joe's has it frozen, and in probably enough for two people. And it's great frozen because you, it's, it's very well priced. It's got a great price. And it is in the um, freezer section at Trader Joe's. It's a piece of cake. You probably go to Trader Joe's a lot, since you're, I think you're only buying for the two of you. So that I highly recommend, and usually I buy a couple of them if I can. I don't shop at Trader Joe's very often, to be honest. I mostly shop at Costco, and then I get the other things that I need at Ralph's. So Costco is the other place, and this is New Zealand ling cod. So this is a this is a really um, special cod. It's not your standard um, Alaskan cod or Pollock or whatever. So it's actually from New Zealand and imported. So it was a little pricier, but it tastes amazing. And in Costco, of course, it's you're probably getting you know, between two and three pounds. So it's quite a bit and it will, for us, it, it, it's it's two meals at, at plus leftovers. So that's where I get my cod. You can all go to the fish market. Um, they've got a, you know, at the fish market in Del Mar, Solana Beach, 
they have a counter there so you can order fish there and take it to go. You don't have to eat there and, and it's a really great counter. It's a little pricey, as you might imagine. It's a fish market and it's a, it's a restaurant. So I think their prices are a little higher. Costco, as with most things, usually has the best value, but Trader Joe's does too. Trader Joe's is actually impressive to me. It's just they have kind of weird stuff so they don't have the normal stuff I need. They have great wines and champagnes. Um, so they've got some, a lot of really cool specialty stuff like that. So that's where I get my cod. Long story short, Costco or Trader Joe's. Okay, I'm gonna taste this again, make sure. Mm-hmm. Yep, I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, reading. Reading the recipe. Mix one tablespoon cold water and cornstarch in a bowl. Whisk into the soy mixture, bring to a boil. Okay, I'm whisking that into the corn, into the soy mixture. And this again is just to thicken it up because this is gonna be a glaze that will kind of marinate the fish. And as I mentioned, there's also a sauce with this, but it is good with just the glaze on its own. So I'm gonna whisk that until it gets thicker. If I need to put more cornstarch in, I'll put more cornstarch in. And the fish, I need to put it in a glass. Last thing, where it is? Here it is, here it is. I'm not gonna do this yet. Wait a minute, we got a fun song on here. Lena Lovitch, new toy. But it's not new toy, but she sang new toy which is her most famous song. New toy, oh wait, oh I saw Lena Lovitch a long time ago in the 80s. Yeah, this is Lucky Number. This is a good song too though. I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put this in here. I think it needs to be a little thicker. So what you can do is, usually there's some residual cornstarch in your little cornstarch mixture. Just put whatever liquid you're cooking back into this and stir it around and it'll pull up the rest of that residual cornstarch. That way you don't have to get it out again but you don't wanna just put cornstarch into something and do it that way. You really wanna mix it up first. Okay, this looks good. So today, gorgeous day. It's seriously like summer here. And just the same as yesterday, it's, it's uh, Patrick even said, should we turn on the air conditioning? I'm like, no, he's crazy. That's why I didn't wanna get air conditioning because he puts it on too high. I hate air conditioning, I like fresh air. Anyway, long story short, um, I got up early and you know, had my coffee and I decided to go for a bike ride. So I have this great route that I like that goes kind of from my house up Rancho Santa Fe Road, down into San Diego, San Diego, up Three Witches, by San Luis, by the Crosby, and then back around kind of by um, 4S and what is that area called? I don't know, by Black Mountain. Really good ride. It's, it's about 25 miles, just under, and a lot of hills and a lot of fast, fast, fast flats on the way home, which I love. It's so much fun to do that. So that was my workout, and then I've been seriously nonstop all day. Washed three cars with my daughter, and then um, took her driving. I don't know if you saw that video. She's 15, almost 16, and we went driving because you know she's gotta drive. But I have this old car, this old classic Mustang, a 67 convertible, and so she wanted, we washed it, and I, I she's been expressing interest in that. And she was always mortified to be in it because she would get attention, you know, because it's, it's a red convertible from 1967. So anyway, we took it and I let her take it out in the parking lot at the church down the street just to kind of get a feel for it first. And then we drove on the roads. I'm drinking a French white wine from the Rhone Valley. Oh, aren't you special? I wish I had one. I actually have some wine in the fridge, white wine. It's a Josh Chardonnay, nothing special, um, because I need it for the sauce that I'm gonna make next. So I might, if there's enough left, have a little glass of that. I wish I had a French white wine from the Rhone region. Okay, this is getting really nice and thick. I don't know if you can see that. I don't wanna you know, pour it out all over the place. So I think we're looking good here. And I will go back to the Mustang. So we drove around, I don't know, we probably drove around 15 miles and just, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun car to drive. It's not performance. Um, I'm sure it has power brakes, but it's not like the modern brakes. You really literally have to put your feet on that. And yeah, you saw her driving out. She was, she was having fun with that. Um, it's so much fun. It's not, it's not something I would want her driving on a regular basis at this point in her driving career. Um, you know, it's not safe. We did have shoulder belts put in. We did have disc brakes put in um, and new lap belts. So it has the safety features as much as you can retrofit a car from 1967, but it was so much fun to drive it with her. And, um, you know, she's, she's very shy, but she's kind of starting to come out of her shell a little bit as she becomes more mature. Okay, so there's that. And let me just, I want to follow the recipe this time to give you guys, you know, I'm a little like fly by the seat of my pants. 
when I cook and really in life in general. Whatever. Bring to a boil, stirring constantly, reduce heat to medium, simmer until mixture thickens to a glaze, about two minutes. Uh, pour a, <coughs> don't inhale it. Pour a half a cup glaze into the shallow dish. So, I don't know what you can see here. Shallow dish, glaze. I'm not gonna measure, I'm just gonna pour it. Now you're gonna reserve some of this for later. You're gonna broil that fish. Looks like about right. So we're gonna cook it, we're gonna marinate it in this a little bit, and then put the glaze on later. Okay, add fish, turn to coat with glaze. Fish already got out. So here's my New Zealand lin cod. And kind of like the last time I made it, it's a big fish. So, you know, there's a, there's a big part and a little part down by the tail. So there's thicker parts in here and thinner parts in here. So this is the thinner part. And it worked out fine before. I just kind of had to gauge when I added it and turned them and took them out. This is gonna be a little trickier though because I'm baking this in the oven, but it'll be fine. This is the kind of fish that it's not as easy to overcook it. Like some fishes, some fishes, some fish, some fishes, you can overcook very easily. Cod and um, sea bass, it's not as easy to do that, I don't think. Um, same with salmon, it has a lot of fat in it. This doesn't seem to have a lot of fat in it, but okay. So you just kind of turn this over in the glaze. It's, it's uh, not really marinating, but kind of. It's gonna cook in this, it's gonna sit in this, then I'm gonna transfer it to a rim baking sheet because we're going to broil it eventually. You could probably just do it in this though. We'll see. Okay. I'm gonna let that sit for a second, read this. Uh, transfer to rimmed baking sheet. Bake until fish is opaque in center about 18 minutes. Spoon, I don't know why I can't just bake it in here. It's just baking. Rimmed baking sheet. Maybe it gives off too much. Uh, I'll follow the directions. You know, I know from the past that I usually just do this. But let's try to follow the rules for once. How about that? Rimmed baking sheet. I put some parchment on here because this has sugar in it. It's got honey. So that will mean that it will um, make a mess. It'll be hard to clean up. So I'm putting it on here. So it won't make a mess. You just throw away the parchment. Piece of cake. Patrick will be happy. My dishwasher will be very happy with that. <laughs> so I'm just putting them on the parchment and then I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put the glaze over this. Where are you gonna go, little skinny fish? Okay. This looks really good. And I'm just gonna pour this over there just to get the best bang for my glaze buck, for lack of a better word. Yeah, so busy day today, shockingly busy, when considering considering our reality here in the quarantine. But it's all good, it's all good. Mm, I got that all over my recipe. This is how my recipes get so dirty. I should probably uh, redo the recipes and whatever. Okay, so put it on parchment on a rim baking sheet and I'm gonna bake this for 18 at 350 and I think it says four, 18 minutes, 18 minutes, they're so precise. Um, I don't know if it's gonna take that long. So what I'm gonna do is set the alarm for 15 minutes to check it, just because you don't want to overcook your fish. And we're gonna broil it anyway. So I would use my phone, but I'm videoing on it, so I can't use my phone. All right, so step two, actually I'm gonna get this going first. Actually, I'm not going to do one. I'm going to get that going first, but I know I need wine, so I'm going to get that. Medium saucepan. I have lots of saucepans. My mom used to give me pans all the time, so I've literally had these pans forever. And it's great. Uh, my mom is a really good cook, too. We're very different in our cooking styles, but good cook. Okay, so this is the ginger butter sauce. This is step two of this recipe. And I, I would just take a picture and post this. I don't know if you'd be able to read this, but we'll give it a try. Combine wine, two cups of white wine, shallots, I don't have shallots, so I'm just using an onion, and two tablespoons chopped ginger in heavy small saucepan. Yum. So it says two cups of wine. So this is when I get to have some wine. Yummy. I don't drink alone, but 
Patrick will be here. He's walking the dog. Uh, yeah, there'll be plenty left for me. Well, I'm just gonna pour it. I'm gonna be Julie Childs now with you guys. Julia Child. Or I guess it's just child. This is a Josh Chardonnay. Like I said, nothing special. Um, I buy Chardonnay mostly to cook with it, but what the heck? I'll drink it. So it is Saturday night. Cheers to everybody out there. Uh, Lori, this is not your white Rhone from the French Rhone Valley, but it is a white wine. So cheers to you. Cheers to everybody out there. Yum. Very good. Okay. Shallots. Shallots are awesome. They've got a different flavor than these onions, but this will be fine. I don't have any shallot steak. So we're dealing with this. I cannot find my favorite knife, so I'm gonna use my second favorite knife. Where's my chef's knife? I have a Santuco. All my knives, not all of them, but most of them are Henkel's. It's a good brand. There's lots of good brands out there though. Okay, I need a third of a cup. Yes, I'm squinting, I know, I can't read without my glasses. These are really small. And I am almost 54 years old, so, you know, I'm no spring chicken. But I've been fighting the whole eye thing, and I don't want to wear readers. It'll be fine. So you're going to want to do these fairly small. So I'm not doing them the right way, because now I'm going to have to chop them differently. But you really want them fairly minced, because this is a sauce. Um, so I would have done that differently if I'd been thinking properly, but not a big deal. And the recipe actually calls for straining the sauce. I don't do that because I like the chunks, but that's what the recipe calls for. So that'd be more like a true French dish. So I'm getting this going because it's gonna we're gonna reduce it pretty significantly. But Patrick and I are the only ones that are here tonight, so we are gonna be the only ones eating this. Not that my kids would eat this anyway; they probably wouldn't. So he's not gonna mind little chunks of onion either. Okay, half a cup, no, a third a cup. Finely chopped, these are not finely chopped. Who cares? Still gonna taste the same. And we're not straining it. I'm gonna put a little more in there. I might put a little more wine in there. This sauce is insanely good. And um, you know, you probably saw those, the, pish, the pishes of fish, the pieces of fish. Um, it's more than we're gonna eat tonight. So there's gonna be some leftovers. Okay, we're good there. Ginger, I use fresh ginger. I keep it in the freezer because it's easier to mince. This calls for chopped ginger, but I'm going to um, mince it with the grater that I always talk about. So keep it frozen. It's much easier to peel that way. It's much easier to mince that way. And this calls for two tablespoons, I believe, of, of freshly chopped peeled ginger. Two tablespoons plus, plus one teaspoon. So it must be garnished or something. So I'll do a little extra, I love ginger. It's, um, you know, you gotta be a little precise to get all of the skin off, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not that precise. So this is the microplane grater. You've, if you watch, watch these lives, you've seen me use it quite a bit. So just, and this I had actually taken out of the fridge right before I started this. So it's not grating as well as it would if it were right directly out of the freezer, not the freezer, freezer. So you can see how nicely that grates. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. I always forget about your perspective. I'm just looking at my perspective. It's kind of selfish of me, isn't it? Not intentionally though. Okay. It's a nice little thing. So taste it. Woo, spicy. It's really good. Okay very hot when you use ginger like this a raw root like this it's got a lot of um, I don't know if spice is the right word but hot but not like temperature hot obviously very unique Asian flavor okay, I'm gonna do some more but great to cook with ginger and, and don't even bother with the spice. There are certain times I use a spice, like when I make um, gingerbread. I don't use real ginger, I use the spice. Much easier. So I'm just start with that. We might want a little more for the one teaspoon it says at the end. So let's get a little more right then and there. All right, let's see what else. 
two cups dry white wine, a third cup chopped shallots, shallots, two tablespoons chopped peeled fresh ginger. Combine wine shallots and the ginger in heavy medium saucepan. Boil until the mixture is reduced one cup, about 15 minutes. That is why I wanted to get this going because now I can start on the, um, the grains. I'm doing that with the Instapot. I'm gonna have another sip of my wine. Hey Debbie. Debbie, oh, your, your comment just went away. I'll look at it later. Um, I need to have you over for dinner though. Lori, I wish we had fish. Dan bought a large number of ground buffalo. Ooh, ground buffalo meat. I love buffalo meat at Costco. Yeah, they have really good ground buffalo. It's great for, I mean, any, anything you'd use ground beef with, obviously. Another Costco product, Ancient Grains. Love, 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 love this. It's got a lot of different textures. It's got uh, an exquisite blend of, exquisite, you gotta say it that way. Exquisite blend of rice, bulgur, barley, wheat berries, red rice, oats, and quinoa. So it's really, 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 really yummy, and it, I love all the different textures in it. So I think it says one to two on here, but I'm gonna do a one, and, one to one and a half ratio. So one cup of the, the grains to one and a half of liquid, because I'm doing it in the Instapot, and I hate it when it's mushy. I think we're only gonna need a cup. That's where the only one's eating it. So I'll start with that. So I'm gonna do one to one and a half water. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in there, but not a ton. because we've got the sauce that is gonna go over everything. I use the pink Himalayan sea salt from Costco, of course. And you can always add more salt later if you want, so air on the light side of that. Mix it up a little bit, put it into the Instapot. I'm gonna do it, this is a tricky one. I never, you know, I make this a lot, but I never really remember. Come on, get in there, baby. I used this last night, maybe I didn't put it in correctly. And there we go. You don't want to mess around with not having the Instapot on correctly. But different rices and grains cook at different times. But I think I do this at 12 minutes, so let's go with that. If it's not done, I can put it in for more. So I'm going to just cook it on high for 12 minutes, manual. Let's go 13. I'm feeling 13. Okay. So what the Instapot does is, I mostly use it for grains. I don't like doing the soups and the braising in it personally. I like to control that a little better. But what it does, it'll get up to heat and pressure and then it will um, cook it for the 13 minutes I put in. And generally it comes out perfectly. Now I also made a cheesecake today and I do make my cheesecake in the Instapot and that is really good. I'm gonna show you a picture of that later. That's not a picture, I'm gonna show it to you. It's not a picture, it's a real live cheesecake in my fridge getting cold for tonight for us to eat. Gonna have a little more wine. I kinda of like this drinking during cooking thing. Okay, let's see, where are we on everything? My, my typical like yoga pose stretch that I always do. Yes, I know I'm weird. But hey, weird is better than normal, right? Uh, boil into, reduce to a cup, about 15 minutes. Add whipping cream, you need a little whipping cream. I just use heavy cream. Uh, one cup, it calls for. I have a little less than one cup, so I'm gonna use what I have. Uh, add the whipping cream and simmer until mixture is reduced to one and a quarter cup, another 15 minutes. I'm not gonna do it for that long. Remove from heat, add butter. So after that, you're gonna put three tablespoons of chilled butter and you're gonna whisk that in. It's gonna just make this insanely rich thick sauce that's gonna go over the fish. And oh my God, I'm actually, sal I'm Pavlovian salivating right now thinking about this. It's so good, I haven't made this in a long time. Okay, we're good, it says to strain it. Don't strain it, stick with the stick with the chunks. Unless you really have a thing against chunks, then do what you must. I need a spoon. All right, so that's where we are now. You know, in the twelfth. I did this song last time. I, maybe I should get some new, new uh, songs. Maybe I should get off of, uh, new wave onto something else, but I really do like the Stray Cats. Notice that there's no salt in the sauce. And there was salt in here from the soy sauce, but it does you don't add salt to anything, which I love that. Rock, 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 little rock to the back. Okay, what's next? That's next, that's next. We got a few more minutes left on that, so we're gonna take it out. All right, what can I show you? I wanna show you the cheesecake. So this will be super dirty, all right? Mm. 
So I make it in a springform pan. This is a seven inch springform pan and it's cream cheese. It's two, two eight ounce things of cream cheese. It's two eggs. It's a little bit of vanilla. I think it's two tablespoons of sugar and maybe a teaspoon or two of lemon zest. So very simple. You make a graham cracker crush first, which is butter and graham crackers and a little bit of sugar and put that in the bottom. You can put that in the freezer or in the oven at 350 for just a few minutes to solidify it. Then you mix all the other stuff together and you put it in here, put it in the Instapot for 27 minutes and it comes out perfectly. Now I'll show you how this works. It's a, it's a spring form pan. So you just unspring it and there we go. Doesn't that look incredible? I'm not gonna eat it right now, but what I wanna show you is my friend, Addie, Addie's Jams. Her name is Denise. And she has these incredible, she gave me some samples um, like of, of, of five different jams, like they're homemade and they are insane. Blueberry with thyme and lemon, Meyer lemon, all these different things. I'm gonna go through all of them in various cooking shows, but this one, I've never heard of this. It's a freezer jam. And a freezer jam, this is, I guess, an Oregonian thing. She's from Oregon, from Portland. And it's fresh fruit. In this case, it's Marion berries, which is a very Oregon thing. And it's in the freezer. So it doesn't have any preservatives or anything in there. It's literally just jam and sugar and a GMO-free pectin to thicken it a little bit. But I tasted it earlier, and I wish you could taste this, but look at this. So you store it in the freezer. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put that over the cheesecake. You know, usually I make my own lemon curd, but oh my gosh. We're gonna put this over the cheesecake and it's gonna be a Marion Berry Freezer Jam cheesecake. And it's gonna be incredible. I will include links to her website. She sells at farmer's markets. She sells in some specialty grocery stores and she literally lives like a half, a, a quarter mile from me. A friend of mine connected us uh, last night and said, you should try this and, and utilize it in your cooking. So I'm going to. I'm gonna make lamb chops um, tomorrow night, I think, and she gave me some mint jelly that she makes, and I'm just so excited to try it all. So uh, again, it's Addie's Jams, and she also makes homemade caramels, and lots of different ones. So I'm gonna leave the website below and on my YouTube channel so you can check it out. Yummy, 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 it was incredible. Carson tried it too, and she about fell out of her chair, it was that good. So I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator, since I already de-panned de it. Took it out of the springform pan. I'll just put it on here. I hear Patrick, I see the dog, they're back in their walk. Put that back in the fridge. So I made one of these um, last week and it's gone. So I had to make another one. That's what you do. Okay, we got a few more minutes on that fish. I'm gonna check it out. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Okay, I see wine, so I'll have a little more wine. Mm, 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 mm. All right, this sauce is looking great. Wow, a little ginger in the eye. Would you like to say hello to the crew? Sure. You must have a drink too. I have a little white wine if you want some. Hello there. Husband, Earthlings Patrick. Earthlings and some non-Earthlings, I know. Oh yeah, there's some aliens but out that's there. that's okay. That's all right, he used to call me an alien because I have a big tongue and it rests against my teeth and it gets all these dents on it. He's like, are you a lizard? Are you part lizard, part alien? I'm like, yes I am, as a matter of fact. He's like, TMI, TMI. He, th he thinks I'm crazy on the things. I really am a stream of conscious person, but I am a little crazy. I will admit that. And he knows that. We've been together a long time, 2001. Long time. I mean, people aren't saying that as, as far as you know. <laughs> you guys can say whatever you want. I am not sensitive. Fish. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. Cancel time, but leave the other on. Okay. This is looking really good. And yeah, let me feel it. Yep, mm, it looks good. I'm gonna pour some of this liquid off because I think it's gonna broil better with the final sauce on there. Okay. Don't forget to save the liver. Save the liver! Save the liver. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we watched that. Well, I watched the Julia and Julie, Julie and Julia uh, movie a couple weeks ago. It was so good. I loved it. I love Julia Child. I, I didn't know all that about her, so it was an amazing movie. A little more wine. And she yeah. does brandy. 
check out some vintage Dan Aykroyd Saturday Night Live skits of yes. your Julia Childs too. You can probably hear him better than you can hear me, but Dan Aykroyd did a Julia Child. Hilarious. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Okay. Okay, so this is done. Da -da 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 -da. Spoon or amazing glaze over fish. Broil until gray glaze is bubbling. About two minutes. I'm not going to do that yet because this is not done. So we got to time everything. But I am going to put the oven on broil so that it is ready. I don't know if you guys can see the Instapot. It is steaming up a storm. It's really hot, so don't touch it like I just did. It's steaming up a storm and it's cooking that. It's not even up to um, temperature yet. So it gets up to temperature, then it cooks it for 12 minutes. Okay, so this, maybe I'll show you. I'm going to use the leftover glaze. So I only used half of this to cook the fish in and I'm going to put it on top of the fish and we're going to broil that. It's going to give it a little nice little crusty um, glaze on it from this soy honey vinegar mixture. So it's, it's very much a kind of an Asian dish. Very yummy. Left my dough. That is the sound of a martini being made. I'm, I guess I'm sticking with wine tonight. I had my margaritas last night, which were amazing. I love martinis, but not like he does. He does the full on straight martini. A little too much for me. Okay, this is ready for the cream. So I have cream in this because in that big thing, I actually freeze my cream um, because it can go bad really quickly, but put the cream in here. So I partition the big thing of cream I get at Costco into smaller things and keep one handy and, and freeze the rest. Because cream is expensive and you don't wanna you want don't want it to go bad because it's like not cheap. So what did I do here? A cup of whipping cream. So we're gonna do this for a while too. It says 15 minutes, but it's not gonna take that long. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit to exp expedite this process. Taste it. It's very good. It's just a nice little subtle subtle sauce with the ginger. I just put a little more ginger in there too. The ginger and the shallots, or in my case, onions, and the white wine and the cream. And then reducing it like we did initially with the white wine, and that we're reducing it again now the cream is in there. It's just gonna concentrate all of those flavors and make it a wonderful sauce. Because at the end, we're gonna put in the butter and whisk the butter out. So it's just gonna get nice and thick like a, like a delicious sauce should be. Not too thick though. Honey, when is this uh, hot weather supposed to end? He knows everything about the weather. Cool down starts tomorrow. Cool down starts tomorrow. There you go. Meteorologist Patrick Brown. Cool down starts tomorrow. I'm fine with that. It's a little too hot for this time of year. Not that I'm complaining. It's been amazing. Okay, so I guess we're just going to wait here for a minute. I really want you guys to see the rest of this and when I put it all together. So you don't have to stay on. You can always fast forward later and watch the, uh, the rest of it. But we're gonna reduce this and it says season with salt and pepper. And I can tell it does need a little salt. And you know I'm not a fan of salt. But you need salt in foods to release the flavor. I'm gonna put the pepper in first because I do love pepper. But most foods do need a little bit of salt if they don't have them naturally. Debbie, you have to start your own cooking channel. No, no, I don't. This is all about all I can handle, but I would love to cook for you. Your cod dish is going to be really good. I think so, Lori. The other two I did um, in the last couple of, uh, the other two I did, the turmeric ginger one, I was blown away by how good that was and very simple. And then I think I did one last week that had the um, it, panko, except I used my sourdough, breadcrumb Parmesan crust on it. Oh, that was so good. I loved both of those. And cod is just a super easy fish to work with. It can really take on anything. You can just put salt and pepper and pan fry it and a little bit of lemon. You can crust it with a, a nut, like a pistachio or, or whatever, or a breadcrumb, or you can do like this with a sauce. There's so much you can do with it. And you know, fish is good for you, so I highly recommend it. Um, like I said, you can use sea bass, you can use halibut, you can use mahi-mahi. Um, salmon, you could probably do this one with salmon. I usually do salmon super simply. Um, I love it with tarragon, butter, salt, and pepper. I do a chipotle salmon with kind of a real a spicy chipotle sauce that has a butter sauce on it as well. That's a really good one.
But, you know, Salmon and I, sometimes we, we get along really well and we have a good relationship, but then I'm like sick of it. I don't want to see Salmon for, you know, six months to a year. And that's just how I feel about Salmon. So, you know, maybe some people are like that. I don't know. You know how it is when you're kind of sick of somebody or something. I didn't say somebody. I said something. Actually, I did say somebody, but I didn't mean it. I'm not sick of anybody. I'm sick of people on Facebook posting a bunch of BS is what I'm sick of. Man, I cannot believe people on Facebook. It's gotten out of control. I'm gonna go ahead and put the salt in there because I can tell it needs it. Now the butter has a little salt in it, so you could wait till the end, but I don't have any issue with salt. I have a good relationship with salt. I don't have high blood pressure. In fact, I have super low blood pressure. So we're gonna do, this is still going, so I'm surprised it's not counting down yet. It's just taking a while. Um, salad with my homemade dressing. It's a vegan Caesar salad dressing. I'm no vegan, but this dressing is insane. I'm gonna make it for you guys one time on the show so you can have the recipe. And it's, it's just incredible. I literally crave this stuff. So super nice, fairly simple meal. It's probably not one of the simpler ones because you have to make kind of two sauces, but it's all right. Okay, let's get this to broiling. Yeah, that's broiling. So basically, this cod is ready to put back in. I'm not gonna put it back in yet because the grains are not ready yet. So I'm just gonna get it all ready here and I'll show you a picture of it. And then we'll broil it in all this uh, nice kind of teriyaki-ish sauce I made. It's not teriyaki, but it's an Asian kind of sweet and sour sauce, for lack of a better word which sounds kind of gross, but it's not really a good name. Oh, B-52s. Anybody who knows me knows I love my B-52s. <laughs> Own Private Idaho, one of my favorite songs about B-52s. Mm. On the ground like a wild potato. I'm so bummed I've never seen them. I love them so much. I did not include them in my Alan Ch album challenge because I never saw them. And I insisted on doing albums I, or bands I had seen. I love that album ch challenge. Mm, it's really good. Really, really good. Mm. So it tastes great like that. But once you put the butter in, hoo, 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 you will be blown away. Okay, now you can see this. It finally reached the point where it was to heat to the temperature, the required temperature to get it to um, the pressure. So now it's down to 12 minutes. Gosh, your family is lucky. <laughs> you should ask them what they think about that. <laughs> I think they're pretty damn lucky getting cooked for every night, but you know, kids, they won't eat this stuff. It's too fancy for them. They want, um, they will eat fish. Um, they'll eat any kind of pasta I make unless it has green stuff in it for Colton. They're, they're really difficult. And you know it's my fault. I, I'm a cook. I love to cook. So when they were young, I would feed them whatever they would eat. And I like to eat later because I would be drinking wine. And I don't drink as much as I used to, especially during the week. I usually drink Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those are like my drinking nights. And during the week, I generally don't. But I would, back then, you know, I was a lot younger. My metabolism was higher. And I would drink when I'd make a nice dinner. So I'd get them handled and then I would make these great meals and have some wine. So they weren't gonna eat the stuff I was making. At least that's what my brain thought. Um, big mistake. So my biggest regrets in raising kids is to not just make, have them eat what I was eating. And another one is not having them, having them read more. And another one is exposing them to language at a very young age. I, I didn't and um, thought about it, I just didn't. And that was a mistake. So I regret that. Those are my three biggest regrets in raising kids. Not having them eat the food we were eating, the fancy schmancy shit, and not having them read enough and regularly because they don't like to read. I loved to read when I was a kid. Granted, things are different now. There's like, you know, the phone and all kinds of other distractions. And then exposing them to a language earlier so they really had that ingrained into their brain because Carson did great, but Colton had a hard time with Spanish last year. So he dropped it and he's gonna be taking it in high school, which is gonna be more of a challenge. Debbie, right, Lauren, it's incredibly talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talented and fun. Well, I'm fun. I will give you that. I'm a little crazy, um, but I do like to cook and I like to drink wine. I don't usually drink white wine, but now it's getting hot. I'm gonna drink white wine more. 
Mm. This is ready for the butter. I am not going to measure big shock. So about one teaspoon at a time, tablespoon. Uh, put this on low heat. So you'll see this is really reduced quite a bit. Wow, this looks so good. You've been in your own private Idaho. Yo, yeah, so Debbie, I know I was supposed to have you over for dinner like, I don't know, a couple months ago before all this craziness started and I can't remember what happened, but we didn't. But I need to, I want to, I miss you. I haven't seen you in ages. You're there with your boys. So at least, you know, you got somebody to be with, but man, teenage boys, older teenage boys, it's gotta be a challenge. Okay, this looks amazing. Mmm, and it smells amazing. Okay, that's still got 10 minutes, but I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the fish. So hopefully you can see that to some degree. So this is the fish that was baked with the sauce on it, and then I put more sauce on it. Now I'm gonna broil it. So it's just gonna get nice and crispy on top. Not crispy, but a little bit crispy. But like, oh, a parchment covering that up. Okay, literally, that's gonna take like two minutes max. Um, you don't wanna mess it up and overdo it. So where's my crazy liquid honey? So see, that's all liquidy again. So again, you learned something today. You can save crystallized honey by just heating it up. I just did it in a saucepan and I put the whole thing in there. So there's probably some off-gassing of crazy plastic that's gonna kill me, but whatever. Something's gonna kill me. Might as well be food related or biking related. But see how that's nice and liquidy? It was completely solid. So you can absolutely save honey. Save the honey, save the liver. It's okay having a party this summer and inviting 100 people. Okay, okay. So you're having the party and inviting 100 people or I'm having the party inviting 100 people. So I usually do have a um, Cinco de Mayo party, which is a lot of fun, but not this year. Mm -mm. Now I will be making, I need a little pepper. I will, I will be doing Cinco de Mayo. I will be celebrating Cinco de Mayo. You know, that classic American holiday. <laughs> Sad, but true. Um, but I'm not sure that this uh, quarantine is gonna be lifted by then. But I already know what I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make a carnitas. I, I usually make these other dishes, but I'm not gonna make them. I'm gonna make a, just a standard, it's not standard. It's a, tom it's a carnitas with a, um, with a verde sauce, with tomatillo and, and jalapeno, and it's amazing. Usually I make chicken mole from scratch, and like I boil the chickens, and I, it's, it's like quite an ordeal, but I'm not gonna go to those extents. I'm gonna braise the pork, I'm gonna make the carnitas and this amazing verde sauce. So I will bring you guys in on that. It's so good. And it's, it's you know, fairly easy. And when I say easy, I just mean anybody can do it if you just follow the instructions. It's, it's you know, it's not like super fancy French food or anything like that. So, hey Trent Boyson, how you doing? Um, okay, so I'm checking on this, checking on the fish. It looks really good. I can smell it. So since that's got honey in it, you know, it can, it can burn very easily. It's not burning, but it is kind of smoking a little bit because the sauce has run off onto the parchment. Again, another reason why you want to use parchment so you don't have to clean that honey sauce off of there. Anybody else having a nice glass of wine or a martini like Patrick or a beer or whatever you're having? Hmm? It is Saturday night. S A T U Y D A Y. No. S A T U Y D A Y. Ooh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. It's almost ready and it looks really, really good. Very, very good. So I think it's going to be delicious. I'm not going to show it to you plated because it needs six more minutes, but I'm going to show you the fish and you can like envision. I will take a picture of it when that's all done. Um, but you can envision. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the, the grains and I'm gonna put the fish right on top of the grains and I'm gonna put the ginger butter sauce right on top of the fish. And then the salad will be on the side or whatever vegetable you're serving. You need to serve a vegetable. And so that's what it's gonna look like. And I think it's gonna be delicious. I hope you all try it. I hope, if you guys want the recipe, let me know. And, oh yeah. So, um, the fish is perfect 
It's gonna look a little weird because the parchment kind of burned, but you guys don't care about that. Uh, Debbie, green apple beer. Oh, good for you. Well, here's a cheers to your green apple beer and my um, Josh Chardonnay because I had to open the wine for the meal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so remember this looks weird because it burned the parchment because it's broiling and the parchment is paper. But look at the fish. I hope I don't drop the phone in there. The fish looks amazing. That is the ling cod, the New Zealand ling cod with the glaze on it. This is the ginger butter sauce, which is gonna be incredible, which is incredible. In fact, I'm gonna taste well. Mm, 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 mm. And this is the Instapot, which has five minutes left. So we're good there. So thank you all. Oh, let me show you this. This is my sourdough. Thank you to Denise for bringing me flour. It's rising nicely. In the morning, I will get that out and I will just make a fresh, yummy roll or loaf of sourdough. And then I'm gonna try some of your delicious jam on that too, Denise. So thanks everybody. I hope you're doing great and having an awesome Saturday night. Saturday night, we're having an awesome Saturday night and I will see you soon. I might even see you tomorrow night because I'm gonna make a rack of lamb with that yummy mint jelly from, uh, from Addie's. Everybody have a good one. Talk to you soon, bye.